Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and welcome to a brand new episode of Bionicle Fanon Reviews, the show where I review some of the canon and non-canon Bionicle models that I find particularly interesting, or in this case, have won a Duck Bricks Fanon Contest. So a couple of months ago, I hosted the Bionicle Fanon Contest for the Dinosaurs of Bota Magna. This was the second contest we ever did, and we got so, so many entries in, particularly so many large category entries, that I couldn't just review one of the winners. Oh no, because today we will be reviewing one of the many different finalists of the Dinosaurs of Bota Magna Fanon Contest. If you look over there, this is a life-sized version of the model that we are reviewing today. I am incredibly excited to showcase this to all of you because it has been a lot of months in the making. Many, many Brickling orders were involved in terms of getting that fully built. I have a massive box of dinosaur parts that I have been building off of, and there are so many dinos we have yet to cover. And so, let's without further ado, jump right into this particular build. Okay, so this is the Kaltarix. It was one of the finalists, one of the top 12 finalists to be exact, in the large category of our Dinosaurs of Bota Magna Fanon Contest, built by Skybird, who is well known to be basically the Rahi master of the Bionicle community. Skybird has built all sorts of Rahi, I think he's even built hundreds of them, and there actually will be many more Skybird Rahi reviews coming on this channel, so do stay tuned for that. This, however, is one of the largest creations I believe he has ever done, and it was an all-digital model. And one thing I want to get out of the way first, just immediately, is that, yeah, this model does not stand at all. There is basically no way to get it to stand in the current configuration, and I have tried literally everything. I was playing around with building the model itself, and obviously we'll talk about this when we get into the posability points, but unfortunately it's just really front-heavy, and there is not a chance you're getting it to stand up on the way the legs are currently set up. Even if you try to maybe like have it completely vertically upwards, you can't really bend the legs backwards too much because of the restriction in the joints there. It's a very floppy creature, it doesn't really stand up, like even completely vertical like this, it'll just topple over. There is no way I've been able to get it to stand at all, ever. The only way that I've been able to do it is by kind of cheating a little bit and changing the way that the legs themselves work. Let's zoom out a little bit to see how this works. Using our 0.5 lens here to really get the entire thing in frame, the way that I kind of have been able to get it to stand is, as you can see, the legs are kind of supposed to be digitigrade legs. They bend backwards like this, which is a really cool design for a dinosaur and really looks realistic. However, they are jointed to the extent that if you move them completely forwards and go like this, which is not the intent, like, this is not the way the legs are supposed to be set up, but if you do that, you can kind of get it to stand up. So let's just kind of try that here. We can get this forwards like so, and then like, yeah, this, I think, well, let's, let's see. I know I got it to stand up at least once like this. I mean, okay, yeah, there we go. So this, this is standing. It honestly doesn't look that bad when it's in this configuration, and I'll keep it in this configuration for the rest of the review just for the purposes of being able to do the rest of the review. So you can make it stand up. This is a way that you can make it stand. Sure, it's not the perfect way, but it is a way. It's not the way that was intended, but it's a way to make it stand. I would love to see people do mods of this because the digital files are available. If you can retain the way the legs are supposed to look, which is... Oops, popped out of the socket there. That's... Uh, Shouldn't have happened, but it's supposed to look like this. If you can retain the legs actually looking like that and making it stand, I would love to see it. Maybe it's just a matter of moving the attachment points upwards or giving it a bulkier tail to balance out the weight. Whatever it is, I don't know, but this is basically the only reliable way I've ever gotten it to stand, which is basically just kind of leaning forwards on the legs here. Now, we cover the Bionicle fan reviews on four major points every single time. Number one, posability. Number two, building techniques. Number three, general aesthetics. And number four, comparison to other models in universe and believability in universe. So starting off with posability, well, 
It doesn't stand unless you have the legs like this, which isn't that bad because at least there is a configuration where you can get it to stand. The legs are not supposed to look like that, but you know what? It is standing. In terms of the posability for everything else, it's actually really good. You've got elbow articulation for the limbs here. The claws can move on the hands. The hands themselves move all the way around. The neck can be moved up and down, so you've got a really nicely reinforced neck that can really bend in all sorts of different directions. The head can move upwards like so. You can, of course, open and close the jaw, and you can actually lock the jaw like this. Like, you can have the jaw be perpetually open or shut because of the friction there, so that is a really cool way of doing it. I really appreciate the amount of effort that went into making sure that these pieces actually kind of stick together to keep it in a mouth open and roaring fashion. That is a very cool look and feel. And I think my favorite thing in terms of articulation is the way the tail works. Let me just rotate him around here so you can see that. I don't know. There's something just so satisfying about rotating this tail back and forth. You can get a nice swish to it. It kind of reminds me of some of the best Ninjago Dragon tails, which don't curve all the way around, but curve just enough to act as a play feature. You can also move the tail up and down, so you can bend it up and down based on the ball joint here. Not a ton, but just enough. And yeah, that is basically the amount of posability that you can get out of this particular model here with the tail, but that is just really satisfying to see. I don't know, I just really like how that's done. You've already seen how the legs articulate, despite having pistons for the feet here, which you would think add stability, they just don't really stand up too well. Obviously in this configuration, he's even balancing with the tail off the ground, so that is really nice. Maybe I'll just leave it in this configuration perpetually because it doesn't look bad like this. You can see there's a lot of detail that went into the posability of the legs from the friction kind of piston here. You've got two different joints here. You've got a multitude of joints here which prevent the legs from being bent too far backwards but do provide a lot of forward motion here which is very nice. I added on extra friction joints here and here. I don't believe it was supposed to have friction joints initially but I did add them on because I wanted to be able to see what I could do to make this move better. Didn't really do much, but you know, it, it does something. And that is basically all the posability you can get out of the model that is intended. Sure, there are a couple things you can do by like moving around the spikes, so you can have the spikes be rotated, but for the most part, all the posability that is intended for the model can be captured here. Moving on to the building techniques, I am a big fan of the overall way that this model was constructed, aside from the placement of the legs. First of all, the tail building technique is so satisfying to swish back and forth. It is really fun being able to actually move the tail, especially using these kind of anchored pieces that wrap around certain joints to make the teeth work like so. You've got the teeth themselves for the jaw working together very nicely. And in terms of building techniques, one thing I do like is that it very clearly is a blue and red colored dinosaur with armor pieces. And a lot of attention was paid to the color scheme. The silver and gray is probably meant to be some sort of an armor placed on top of the dinosaur. Again, these are biomechanical dinosaurs crossed with kind of robotic pieces. And moving upwards, as you can see, the only red pieces that you see on the model are these spikes, which I think works out really well. You have this massive Spinosaurus-like fin on the top here which just looks so good has a very very striking appearance to it this was a pain to get the bottles for to get the pieces for because each of these little red hero factory beast claws only appeared in a couple of 2019 spider-man sets so i had to scour bricklink and basically deplete the bricklink supply just to be able to make these but i'm very glad i chose to put it together because the silhouette once you actually have these spikes inwards just looks really striking you have two different kind of layers of fins arcing on the sides here. You have the one large center fin, and it kind of cascades onwards to the back here where you have these spikes continuing onwards to the tail, and I really like the building techniques being used for the parts usages, especially you can see the tail starts out large, gets smaller, and then ends in a little red axle, which is just super cool to see the progression of the spikes here. One thing I do want to uh, point out here is that unfortunately the building techniques for one of the things is impossible to recreate in real life. The way that this last spike is supposed to work is it's supposed to actually be angled to kind of like, I mean, it's supposed to be pointing this way to be congruent with the rest of the spike here. That would force it to clip with this piece right here. So there is a little bit of clipping because it was a digital model. It's very minor though. You can kind of reconfigure the pieces as I did here to make it still attach. This is kind of a custom workaround for these Solution. I'm sure there are better ways to do it, but the way that it's set up in the instructions does involve a little bit of clipping, so just a fair warning for those of you who do want to build this yourselves. Now, 
the thing is, thankfully, that you could very easily just say swap out the red pieces for gold and have pretty much just the same exact effect for a much cheaper cost, which I believe I've seen some people actually do. So if you do want to build this in a much cheaper fashion, you do have gold as an option. Although I do think the blue and red color scheme is something very unique for a Bionicle build and something that is very, very striking to me. Now, moving on to the overall aesthetics of the build itself. Aesthetically speaking, this build is phenomenal, especially if you ignore the posability weirdness aside, and let's just kind of get this back to the original way it's actually supposed to be set up so we can admire the aesthetics for what they're supposed to be. This just looks really good, aesthetically speaking, for a color scheme for a build of a large creature. Maybe could we get one leg upwards and one leg? No, okay. Can't, can't do one leg, has to be both, but I mean... This, just aesthetically speaking, is very, very cool looking. The silhouette is very striking. You've got the blue and the red, which is a very nice color scheme to have. The red really pops. I like the usage of even the red sword, which originated from like Exo Force and Indiana Jones being used there, to have these spikes kind of tapering off. Everything about this is just done really well, and there's been a lot of attention to detail in terms of crafting the way that the head works, the way the teeth lock together in the jaw, having it open and shut, Aesthetically, this is a really cool looking, almost like a cross between a T-Rex and a Spinosaurus in terms of the design here, which I think was absolutely the intent. The way that the color scheme works really well with the pins is also really good. The red pins are specifically used here because they actually are in conjunction with the way the spikes work. There's obviously blue pins being used on the bottom there because they work in conjunction with those. A lot of attention to detail was paid in getting the colors to work out right for this model, and that is something that I believe really paid off and it looks really good when put on display featuring all these different colors all together it's just a really fun model to build now in terms of the rest of the aesthetics I think the color blocking is also very good the silver acting as armor pieces really adds a nice kind of highlight color to the build itself oh man <laughs> nice highlight color here and you also have the head which is built in a really interesting manner I appreciate the function to open and close the jaw now if we could just get this standing again so I can please continue with the review thank you very much uh, all right he's standing he's standing okay well we'll let it we'll let him be and Overall, I think the aesthetics of this model are some of the best out of the entire contest for the dinosaurs. We're going to leave them like that. I'm not trying again. So with that, I think it's now time to move on to the believability in universe. So with that, let's bring alongside some representative samples from the Bionicle world to talk about this fourth and final point. So begrudgingly, I will try to make him stand up again. I thought I had him resolved with these legs here. Man, this is... This is a little frustrating, I will have to say, in terms of trying to get it to stand up. It's it's very annoying. I, I definitely hope that somebody puts out a fix to this, because I, I really like the way this model looks. It's just the posability is hurting it so much. Okay, if we can lean the head against my Review Studio border here. It's, okay. Yeah, yeah, he's leaning there. Alright, alright. It's standing, it's standing. There we go. So now that the model's standing, we'll bring alongside a sample Glatorian for the Anika build we have Akar here, as we've been using for all of the fan and reviews, so he kind of goes right up to its neck. And an Agori, which is Ranu here, which, uh, let's just kind of put him by the feet here, he basically goes up right to the knees. Altogether, I think this really does fit in with the Bionicle world. One thing I really, really appreciate about this model is that, for the most part, it specifically only uses pieces that originated from the 2009 era of Bionicle, or were around at the time of the 2009 era. The only pieces I believe that it uses that were not around at the time are specifically these particular pieces here, the Spike pieces, which obviously came about around the Hero Factory times, and... I think that's it. I mean, there's a couple of friction pins used, so I guess those are new for 2022, but not really that notable in their usage. Obviously, there are some recolors that never existed until much later, like the silver armor here, and you've got the blue kind of armor here, but all those pieces were around when Bionicle was first coming out around the 2009 era for this type of dinosaur creatures, and I think that's really cool that a lot of dedication was put into making this feel like it could be an actual LEGO Bionicle model should they have actually put out sets around that time frame. All the parts are pretty much era accurate aside from, obviously you've got the ammo belts and the spikes here, but everything else is era accurate to what you would see from LEGO at the time, which is just something I really like about this particular dinosaur. 
Now, in terms of the scaling, I think that it scales fairly well compared to the characters themselves. Definitely feels like it would be a big threat for the Glatorian and Agori to face because this is one of the largest entries to the contest itself. It was, after all, for the large category, and it just looks really good with having the characters standing next to it because I think that the believability in universe here is just very strong because it uses pretty much pieces that were only around at the time that these came out. And so I'm going to give Believability in Universe a 10 out of 10. This is the perfect biomechanical dinosaur. You've got Bionicle G1 mechanical detail here all throughout, and everything else feels organic with the way the blues are using kind of more organic, kind of smooth curved pieces, right down to the more textured piston detailing of the silver. And of course you have the red spikes. Everything just looks really good about the way the model is put together. On to aesthetics. Aesthetics is also getting a 10 out of 10 because aside from the structural issues, the aesthetics are just phenomenal. I love the way the color scheme works, the blue and red is so striking, that spike is so cool, and this was my number one most anticipated build, I'll have to say, out of all the dinosaurs, when I first saw images of them, I could not wait to put this together, and the overall aesthetics do not disappoint. Moving onwards to the posability, yeah, that's where this is gonna get dinged, honestly, like, I don't know, 4 out of 10? I mean, you, you can make it stand like this, but it's not the way it was intended. I feel bad giving this such a low score for posability, but I definitely feel like this could be rectified by either just giving it a beefier tail or moving the legs upwards. It's a shame because, again, this was a digital model. There was no real way to actually test whether or not the posability would work, so definitely do not blame it on the designer there. They were definitely just working with digital pieces, and you can't really tell how stable something is by that. It's just a big shame that it doesn't stand up whatsoever because there's so much attention to detail being put into allowing the joints to move that it feels like such a shame that it just doesn't stand up. Moving onwards though to the final point, building techniques. I'm gonna give building techniques a six out of 10, really mostly just for the legs. Really everything else about the build is wonderful, it's just the legs really let it down because despite the fact that they have so many joints and they are fully kind of movable and posable, it actually is a bit of a detriment for this model because the fact that there are so many joints means that it will just topple on any one of the joint pieces collapsing. Oh, boom. let's not touch it. It's kind of starting to fall over already. So everything else about the model is really well done. It's just the joints for the legs definitely needed some improvement. Maybe the tail could have been beefed up a bit, but everything else is just really fantastically done. Love the way you can lock the jaw into a roaring open position and everything else is just so good about the model that I feel like, in my opinion, the good outweighs the bad. And yeah, as you can see, you can get it standing. I mean, there is a way that you can get it to stand up in the current configuration without any modification, I mean, aside from the couple of friction joints added, by just changing the position of the legs, which I think is very good and definitely gave it back some points in my opinion. Maybe, maybe Posability is a 5 out of 10. I don't know, you, you can decide. But with that, we've summed up our review of the Kaltarix by Skybird, and this will be our last Rahi dinosaur review in a while. There are a couple more reviews that I still am working on, specifically the Botagana by Jectorsneck is one of the ones that I am still working on, as well as the Thundertail Longneck by Rumabeer. We have reviewed every single one of the other 12 finalists. Unfortunately for those two, I am still waiting on a couple of Brickling orders to finish them. They have been taking a long time to get here. I, I may just cancel them at this point, because they're taking like months to get here. But as of right now, these are the only ones that I have built. Only two to go, so I am making good on my initial promise to review every single one of the 12 finalists. I mean, technically 11 because one of them was an art entry, so all 11 physically buildable entries for this particular contest. Can't wait to build and review the last two because they are really good looking and I certainly am very excited to add them to my collection, but this was one of the largest ones to get checked off out of the way. And do stay tuned for the channel for even more fan and reviews coming soon because I have not forgotten them, I will be finishing up the Dark Hunters and Rahi and the other cannon builds. They're still coming, I just have to work on them and I'm, I'm just delaying because I really don't want to have to get to the really bad Dark Hunters, like, just a waste of my time and parts budget to build those that are just really not good, but I, I will get to them. I did promise that I would build every single Rahi and Dark Hunter, so I will do that, and there will be a few more special surprise fan and reviews coming very soon for other models and mocks around the community. I won't spoil those yet, but do stay tuned because we've got a lot of fun stuff in the works, and thank you so much for sticking with the channel all this time. I hope you've been enjoying these fan and Rahi reviews, and yeah, stay tuned for more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming away very soon. Thanks so much, and bye for now. 
All right, and with that, we have summed up our review of the Bionicle Dinosaur Kaltarix. This was such a fun one to build. The moment I saw pictures of this, I was so excited to make it. I think this was actually the first one I made out of all of the 12 or so finalists. So this was really, really great. I cannot wait to be able to showcase all the rest of them to you because we're only, I think, a little over halfway done with the Dinosaur Contest reviews. I was going to try to review all of the finalists. I still am. We have a lot more to go but I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning into Duckbricks and like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. And tune into Twitch if you want to see any LEGO building live streams, city setups, LEGO video games, and so much more. Thanks so much and bye for now.